So yesterday I picked up a Stingray. This is my first old stern machine, solid state machine. And so I am by no means an expert um, at fixing these or maintaining these. But I'm going to just start the game off. Um, I love that sound. And um, just test each of the switches and solenoids very quickly um, just to make sure it's fully functioning. So each of the flippers are obvious. And then as I go over each of the switches, does it register? So that's testing the solenoid on the uh, drop target resets as well as the switches. Um, there's another switch back there. Switch on the spinner. Switch there. No, switch there. Each of the pops. These rollovers. I might just roll the ball down. That's working well. Um, pop a ball in here. Top saucer, that's working. That's one. And there, the slings. And the interesting thing here is the switch is working, but the slings solenoid is not firing. So that's something that I'm going to have to get into and have a look at. But other than that, it looks like all of these are working. It's just this one. Um, so let's have a look under the play field and see if we can get to the bottom of it. So I thought I'd do an explanation of how these solenoids get fired. And effectively what you have on the older machines is, well in fact on most machines you have the following. You have a positive lead which brings the 50 odd 60 volts to the solenoid and then the circuit is completed which energizes the solenoid by grounding it so it's effectively this is continuously on and this by um, triggering a switch or the driver boards in fact what they will then do is they will come through with the transistor the transistor will complete the circuit to ground and then the energy can flow so it's, it's a little bit like you've got a tap which is the hose is full of, um, of water which is your, your positive lead and um, then suddenly you complete the circuit by releasing the uh, sprinkler head on the other side it's effectively uh, completing the circuit allowing the current to flow through and to go somewhere now what that means is you can test your solenoids um, by simply completing that circuit manually by grounding the, the, the negative lead. Now there's a couple of ways to determine the negative lead. So on this, which is an older stern machine, which again I'm, I'm learning about as I go, um, you'll see that um, even the small, uh, the single um, solenoids for the pop bumpers and the slingshots have got diodes on them okay and one of the ways that you can determine which is the positive and the negative is the diode has a band on going to the positive side so you know that this is the positive and this is the negative the other way um, is that you find that the positive wire is often daisy chained to a number of different solenoids so it's often um, it's often got multiples. Uh, the same color will have multiple um, wires going off and it'll, you'll see it being traced around the boards to, to other uh, solenoids. So that is another indication that this is the positive. Um, and um, then the other way is just simply that each of the solenoids will have a slightly different color normally um, on the, the wire that goes back to the board and grounds um, 
so and it's it's often a, th a slightly thinner wire um, but you know don't use that as a as a key metric because it's not always the case but so clearly on this side this is the positive this is the negative because the band is on this side here um, on the diode uh, this wire is not daisy chained anywhere else this yellow wire can be found on a number of of the the other solenoids around so I'm very confident um, that this in fact is the um, this in fact is the positive so um, you need to be very careful that you don't um, when you when you do this you, you make sure you get this right otherwise you will blow a fuse um, in these older games um, the fuse is actually located um, under the play field so on this old stern game there is the fuse and you can see there's the yellow line so if you ground that it'll blow that fuse so you just want to be careful that you don't do that so you can see that the yellow is being used by a number of um, these solenoids so we're going to test um, this one first which I know is working um, by grounding the orange lead on the left hand side on the camera so how do you do that well what we've got to set up is you take um, one of the easiest little tools you need in your toolbox is just a set of uh, crocodile clips um, and you go and find the ground braid um, and clip one end on there and then uh, with the other you're going to simply touch very quickly onto the negative lead so the, not the side but the, the banded side in this case so we're going to touch it on this one briefly and if we do that it will simulate the board completing the ground and the solenoid should fire so that's what we're going to do let's turn the game on okay so now if I simply touch this you can see that solenoid flies okay if I go to other solenoids um, you'll see the same thing will happen again on this case here I've looked at my diode it's got my yellow one in this case there's only one wire coming off of it um, but I've got the banded diode on this side if I hit this side this should fire okay so that's working now so the offending pop bumper is up here so again I'm looking at the diode let's do this one first we know this one's working so the band on this is on the top lug and on the non-banded side is on the left so that's working fine if I go over to the other side of the game and I touch the non-banded side which is a black and yellow yellow bands on it absolutely nothing happens so what that suggests is either there's no power coming in here or there's something functionally wrong with this solenoid maybe the wiring is, is loose onto the solenoid um, something like that something as simple as that um, we'll have to have a look and see but normally that should fire um, the other thing you can then go and have a look at is um, let's, whilst, we get, whilst we have a look at this um, we're going to have a look at the uh, check the diet as well once we've got it because uh, it's a cheap and easy thing to do so I'm going to just get the soldering iron out and take that uh, solenoid off um, so I'm going to turn the game off um, the other thing we can do is uh, just check to see the, the resistance in the uh, solenoid as well so if I clip this onto each lug with the game off obviously I'm just going to check to see what resistance I get okay so we're getting something like 10 11 ohms which is fine for these um, 
and if I go and do it on the other game, on the other side, and here I'm getting 4.3 milli ohms, which means that there's something wrong um, distinctively here, and. Uh, we're going to have a look. There's potentially something wrong with the diet and or the, uh, the solenoid itself. So let's get that off and have a look. There's definitely something wrong with that. Just because I'm paranoid, I'm going to take a picture of, of this before I take it off. It's pretty much what I do with anything. In this case, it's pretty basic. I don't really need it, but I want to do it anyway. Now we're just going to remove these two screws, turn off the soldering iron. I'm not used to dealing with a, a play field that doesn't have a big speaker at the bottom that uh, has got a large magnet on it and then whenever you drop any screws it automatically sticks to those. It's quite strange. So this is, uh, as I said, my first older stern. This one from 1977, previously the oldest game that I'd had was a Terminator 2, which has got a very different board set, much more complex, obviously proper sound. stop and then the coil just comes off and we're going to have a look at this at the bench this is what the the units off it's got the sleeve which comes out which seems to be in fairly good condition and straight away see what may be the issue. There's a little strand, a little wire that potentially looks like it's loose that goes from the actual solenoid onto the lug seems to be loose but let's go and have a look and make sure. Okay so what you can see here if I zoom right in so this is your standard sort of older machine uh, solenoid setup where you've got your banded diode on the, the uh, solenoid. You, you find this as well on some of the newer games um, on say um, for example I remember on the Terminator 2 you find it on the the plunger, auto plunger. You don't necessarily need them on all games but sometimes it can cause you a real problem if you obviously solder. If you solder the wrong side on here because um, the reason for the diode is that when this discharges, um, so after you've, after it's fired, it can actually result, I can't remember the name of it, but there's like a residual charge which can, because it's charging quickly, energizing, and then it, when it discharges, you want to stop that charge going back to the, to the um, transistor and force it out to the ground, so you, that's why you use the diode, which stops the uh, power going back to the transistor. But if you put this on the wrong way around, what you're going to find is that the power is going to flow from the positive straight through um, uh, back down to the transistor and blow your transistor. 
So, um, you, what you because what you find is the power is 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 effectively unable to um, to flow back to the transistor with the diode in place because it flows. Um, in the direction from the anode to the cathode so from this side um, normally the power would like to flow this way and not this way and if you put it on the wrong way around what it allows the power to do is, is go back this way um, and back up into the transistor so it'll, it'll ignore the, the solenoid altogether and just put all its power into the transistor and you just get this lovely popping sound as your transistor goes done that anyway easy to do so what we're going to have to do here is just to try and see whether this um, is a problem that we can fix or whether there's something more sinister small issue here this wire is is unfortunately the wrong one it's the one that starts the coil off so it's it's going to be a bit tricky we might need to create a little jumper for it um, be a shame if we have to replace this whole thing so we have to be a bit careful here uh, that we don't break this off um, so to test whether this is shorted or not what I'm going to do is just burn a little bit of the insulation off the end which will allow me to test the solenoid with my multimeter I've connected the one lead to the one side which I know is connected and we'll connect the other with a plug and let's see what we get. Okay, so we're getting a normal reading of around 10, 11 ohms which is fine. So we know that the solenoid is, is okay. Um, the interesting thing will be also to test the diode. So because this is not in circuit, because we know that that wire is loose, let me test the diode. I don't need to actually desolder the diode. So if I put the positive on the banded side and the negative on the non-banded side, there's no reading. If I swap it around and I now put the negative on the banded side, and the positive on the non banded side, I'm getting my reading which demonstrates of 0 0.5 volts, which tells me that the diode is fine. So, all I've got to do to get this firing again is um, to connect up this little wire somehow. I'm going to need to see how I'm going to do that because that's normally if you, you can unwind a little bit of the wire and extend it but this one is a bit tricky because it's right in the core. Um, I'm going to see what I can do down here and see if I, there's a possibility of unwinding. I'm also conscious I don't want to break it off because then I'll, it'll just be gone. Okay so um, I'm going to try to see what I can do to find a, little, a tiny little wire to, so we can create a little jumper and just see that's solder that in place because it would be a bit silly to effectively throw away a, a perfectly good solenoid just for a you know a centimeter or two of, of very thought small copper wire so I've got a single strand of wire I'm going to try to see if I can get that soldered on so I'm just tin my tip off and let's start by just seeing if we can get some solder onto it to stick onto this With that wire soldered on, we can test whether it's 
that's working. If we put this on setting on ohms, we should get around 10, 11. If that's all working. Ten point six, beautiful. Okay. So now we just need to get a little bit of insulation and to get that up there, just to maybe a big paranoid around the insulation, but a little bit. But first we're just gonna put a little bit of this shrink strip tubing on. It is seriously overkill. I don't think we really need it. But I'll just Why not? Okay, that's, that's done okay. It's not great, but then I'm gonna feed that through. It's just got a little bit of insulation and up and around the lug and I'll solder that on now. Okay, so that's, I believe, will have been repaired. I'll just re I'll put some fresh solder on here from using my desk soldering iron, which is. a little bit easier to work with. Let's reflow that should make it a bit easier when we go to put on. leads back. Just add excess solder here. That'll make it a lot easier. Okay, we'll do our final test just to make sure that's all worked. So again, each leg, we're looking for 10 to 11 on ohms. Let's have a look. Yeah, that looks good enough. Okay, so I'm going to install that now again. Put that back. Um, and um, see how we go. I'm gonna give this a bit of a, just a clean whilst I've got it open. It's a little bit mushroom, but not worth on a slingshot replacing. Um, and this sleeve is okay, it's good enough. And uh, we should be good. So I've got the solenoid, um, goes lugs this plastic lug side down, um, in goes the coil sleeve with the lip that sitting on this side, the same side as your coil stop, coil stop goes on and then we secure it in with the screws and then we'll solder on the pieces. Little washer and the 
on than that. It's a little bit, a little bit fiddly. There we go. I'll get to tighten that in a second. It's interesting that these are actually threaded. So the nut on the end is it's just extra, but it is these screws actually threaded. And it is a bit irritating. It's a flat screwdriver rather than a, a nut drive, a nut head or a, a um, Phillips head screwdriver. on tight. This one I'll have to do with a little spanner. Because I don't think that yeah, the nut driver is not going to fit on. I'm just going to tighten this with Okay, let's fire up the soldering iron again. So what I've done to uh, help me out is I've actually used a crocodile clip to secure the wire um, to make it easier. Soldering is always a pain because you always need one extra hand. Um, and so... That's nice and secure. Okay, so that was a bit messy, but we got there in the end. Now let's turn the game on. And see if we um, have done our job right. So I've got my braided. I've got my braid. I've got my... Um, crocodile clip tool out again. I've got my braided end, got this plugged into the ground braid and there we go, it fires. So that way the um, we fixed that simple problem and a nice quick and easy fix without having to replace anything. Um, I'm happy with that. If uh, you like what you see you can push the little like button or subscribe. Um, again, I'm just a guy who doesn't know a huge amount, but I'm trying to get to grips with fixing these machines. And um, hopefully, whatever I can, all my mistakes as I make, or any things that I learn along the way, can help others along the journey and uh, help keep my passion for pinball alive. This is the uh, pinball evangelist, otherwise just trying to fix machines. 
playing machine spreading the word of pinball. <laughs> <laughs>